Well, hello and welcome to the Matchroom Bubble just opposite the SSE Arena here in Wembley. And finally, it is David Avanesian and Josh Kelly, the final press conference. Fingers crossed, this time nothing can go wrong. Clip that up, send it to me when it all goes completely wrong. But Adam, Adam Smith, you're standing in front of a banner that says December 2018 cancelled, March 2020 cancelled, January 2021 cancelled, February 2021. Finally, it looks like everything is going as it should do. We're all in the bubble. Um, they've both tested negative. They're both so excited about this fight, as are we. I think it's a fight that if it had happened um, in Sheffield um, at the back end of 2018, I think it would have lost some of its sparkle uh, because it is such a great match. Um, also, for our Venetians European title, um, there's been obvious needle between the two camps. There's been um, a lot of questions asked about whether Josh Kelly is ready for this, whether Avanesian is quite as good as some of his old form might suggest. Um, timing, I think, is crucial to this fight. Uh, but what it is, it's a, uh, it's a real 50-50 fight. You talk to people inside of uh, the bubble, outside, you know, around the boxing game, and uh, people are split, really split. I think a lot of going for the proven, uh, hardened aggression, experience and knowledge of Avanesian. But I think in equal numbers, people are going for the sublime skills, the precocious talent and the ability that we know that Josh Kelly possesses. Put that in a melting pot, Andy, and we should have an absolute firecracker on Saturday night. It's one I cannot wait for. Yeah, we should just say that... Um you'll see it across Matchroom um, boxing social media channels. There was a minor incident last night that was swiftly dealt with between the security teams. And as it uh, transpired, both teams then went in the games room and played a little bit of pool and <laughs> ping pong together, uh, table tennis, I should say. So the, the room, yeah, there is, there, there is tension, uh, understandably, especially in a bubble environment. Um, and yes, there was a flare up, but it was dealt with. Yeah, so I hear I was, uh, <laughs> I, was I was away up in my room, uh, obviously in isolation. I think you guys got here a day earlier, so I was waiting for my, my test results. But I heard when I, when I came down and uh, the security filled us in on, uh, on what happened. And, and look, you know, there are tensions. It's a huge fight for both uh, parties. And as we said, there's been some back and forth. We remember the, the press conference, what, this time last year, uh, where, you know, there was some verbals between Neil Marsh and Adam Booth. And, and look, it adds to the spice of it. You know, ultimately, you've got two very, very good fighters who are, um, you know, coiled and ready to go. And uh, I think that, you know, there'll be the build up today. There'll be the the head to head at the weigh in tomorrow. But the most important thing is what happens in that ring uh, at Wembley on Saturday night. And as we found out last weekend, expect the unexpected, you know, all the unpredictability of coming back to boxing uh, in 2021, still behind closed doors. Uh, and we saw you know, last week one of the biggest upsets in recent times on, on our shores. We saw high controversy with scoring. We saw knockouts. We saw you know, prospects being tested. We, we had everything. I expect more of the same this week, not just from the top of the bill, but a great chief support we've got with Florian Marku and Ryland Charlton, which should uh, uh, provide some fireworks, both unbeaten. And um, you know, you've got Robbie Davis Jr., you've got Jordan Gill, you've got Johnny Fisher, who's got a great story behind him, making his heavyweight debut. You know, it's, it's a fantastic card. And I think what we do know is boxing is back. Um, and uh, this is one fight, this main event, that everybody has been looking forward to for so long. So I think we, we had to expect a, a few stories in the bubble this week. But the most important thing is that uh, the camps are ready, the fighters are ready, and, uh, and it will happen on Saturday, finally. Yeah, so there's loads of comments and predictions already coming in. Christian Graham, uh, Kelly uh, with the red and white of Sunderland, so he obviously wants him to win. Mick 07, David KO, he's picking Avanesian. Uh, Miller Miller, Kelly versus Ben next. I mean, that is what everybody's talking about, but I'm sure David Avanesian will have uh, differing opinions. Studio 66, Kelly to win by KO or TKO. Daily fights, Kelly KO. And then loads and loads and loads of comments about Ryland Charlton and Florian Marku, which could steal the show, could steal the press conference today. Um, again, there is a little bit of bad blood between those two. 
Yeah, it's a great story, isn't it? We love a great story in boxing. You know, Ryland Charlton's uh, sprung onto the scene with that upset of Joe Laws. But, you know, good ticket seller. Um, you know, he looked, uh, he looked a real aggressive force, didn't he? And he, he, he took apart Joe very, very well um, in, in, on that show. But Florian Marku is, uh, you know, he's an enigma, isn't he? He's got a huge support base. Um, he's, you know, very well versed in many sort of combat sports, martial arts and, and, and kickboxing. He's, you know, he's been, uh, he's been a real fighter for a long time. You know, we want to know how good he is um, as, a, as a boxer. And, and I don't think we saw the best of him um, just before Christmas. Um, I thought he won that fight and, uh, you know, he, he got the draw. But look, they're both unbeaten. It's a, it's a great matchup of styles. It's a great fight at this stage of their careers for Eddie Hearn to make. I think this is what we want. You know, we had it through fight camp. We've had it through a lot of cards in the bubble situation. These terrific matches at different levels, whether it's, you know, area, whether it's English, whether it's British, whether it's at world title level. This is a really good fight. It's got everyone buzzing. Again, another one that you can't pick a winner. You can't pick a winner of the, of the main event. You can't cast, cast iron and say, Josh Kelly's definitely going to outbox David Avanesian or is going to be just too much for Kelly. And you can't pick a winner out of Marku and Charlton. So that's what we want. And that's what we're going to get. How, dare I say, have you recovered from Saturday? I think we all went home in a state of complete shock. Um, and not in a disrespectful way to Maurizio Lara, but can't get away from the fact that that was set up as a huge platform for Josh Warrington to return to Matchroom, return to our screens on Sky Sports, to get those big names in a, in a marked time win. Didn't happen. Right hand side of the build did not listen. And I suppose in a number of ways, that is why we love boxing. Maurizio Lara came here, changed his life, changed his whole career around. Josh Warrington, same thing. His career has been changed uh, for the worse. That's what's gripped us for many, many years, Andy, and all the, the fans out there. It's uh, expect the unexpected always in this sport. You know, we've had, you know, Joe Joyce beating Daniel Lebois. We had Dillian White coming a cropper against Alexander Povetkin, rematch to come very soon, as we know. Um, it was, a, it was a seismic shock on, on Saturday night. Let's send congratulations to Team Lara. They were brilliant in here last week. They were very confident. They were very um, calm and they were happy, weren't they? A happy camp. But you and I and, and countless others in here watched um, training sessions with Lara and there was nothing in them that suggested that there would be a problem for Josh Warrington. Listen, I think it was a combination of things. You know, maybe, you know, there was ring rust. He'd been out a long time, Josh, uh, 16 months. Maybe it was slight complacency. Maybe the whole political situation that had happened, losing his title. Maybe it was the lack of the legions of fans. Maybe it was watching Reese Mould an hour before get knocked out. Um, maybe it was the weight. I was quite concerned, actually, during the week, as you know, about his weight. So maybe it was a combination of things. But the thing was, he never got started. He got hurt early. And, um, you know, Laura did a terrific job of, 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 you know, winning the fight, causing a great upset and going back to, to Mexico with a really unexpected victory. As for Josh, he's got to dust himself down. I hear he was talking to Anthony Joshua last night. That's great. You know, he's, he needs uh, some inspiration. He needs some support at this time. He's lost for the first time in his life. He can come back. Of course he can. You know, it was just the manner of how it happened. And, and you're right, it was when we were driving home, you know, everyone was thinking, wow, you know, that was, that was just. And add that to the controversy of the scoring in the Kiko Martinez fight. You know, Lee Woods, tr terrific performance as well. Well, it was a great night to have us back. And I, and I think that, you know, it had everything, didn't it? And it had that big upset. So, um, you know, a rematch is going to be huge. He needs time out, Josh. He needs time to rest up with his, uh, his lovely family. He's, he owes us nothing. He's been a, a, a brilliant sort of British story, hasn't he, for, for the last, you know, six, seven years, you know, coming through the levels, doing it the hard way. Um, a lot of people in boxing have a lot of time for Josh Warrington. It was really nice to, to read some of the comments, you know, Kid Galahad and, and Shaka Stevenson, people coming out, actually supporting him where they could have really stuck the knife in because he was so brave, Warrington, whether he ever really recovered from what happened in the fourth round or actually I thought even earlier in the fight um, he was so brave but let's congratulate uh, Maurizio Lara and his team for coming and, uh, and, and, and getting the win of their career and uh, the win of their lives it's, uh, he's 22 you know, what sort of force will he be? And uh, we'll, we'll look forward to sort of welcoming him back, maybe when crowds are back, uh, in Leeds for a, a fantastic rematch. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was one of those where uh, you couldn't quite believe what you were seeing.
Broken Nose Boxing, a regular contributor. Good to hear from you. Kelly should not overlook Avenesian. Don't make the mistake that Warrington did. Um, I wonder if in 2018 he may well have been overlooking David Avenesian, but certainly not now. You don't get that impression at all. This, this fight is tenfold bigger than it was back then. I think that's a really good point, Andy. I think that, you know, when he was going to fight uh, Avenesian on that uh, Kelbrook undercard, I think, you know, Josh maybe slightly... You know, listen, he was younger, wasn't he? Younger and, and, and maybe just felt that he could beat anyone at any given time. But obviously, matchmaking is, is, is crucial. And I wonder if he wouldn't have beaten David Avenesian on that night. This is very different. Of course, it's built into a much bigger fight. It's for the European title. It's over 12 rounds. I think the, you know, the, the time, the delay might have helped Kelly a little bit more. The younger guy, time to work with Adam Booth. But look, you know, Avenesian and the team are so confident that Josh Kelly has made a real mistake here and he is the proven fighter going into this so absolutely right do not take anything for granted but I think maybe Josh would have learned that out in America against Ray Robinson you know that was a close fight maybe he just felt he had to turn up to to win that and it was a tough one so um you know, we, uh, we'll, we'll learn so much more about Josh Kelly, whether he is going to become, you know, the world champion, the elite fighter that Adam Booth and, and the team feel he will and has the, the potential to be, or whether this is a, a step too far and whether this is a, a leveller. Um, it's going to be fascinating to find out, but uh, I can see arguments on both sides. I don't know if you saw Sean Dyche's uh, Burnley press conference where he was talking about football lookalikes. I mean, there is a great one coming here, which I, I thought of and I've been keeping to myself, but uh, Jonathan Finch, you read my mind, stop doing that. Uh, Kelly's Baturbiev look will pull him through with the beard. Have you seen Kelly yet? Have you seen him? Definitely a bit of Baturbiev look going on there. I haven't seen him. I've seen pictures. I haven't seen him. But uh, look, I think he's gone really back old school. I think he's trained so hard for this fight. And I think maybe, you know, he's the pretty boy, isn't he? The image, the, 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 the hot prospects. And I think maybe there's a little bit of uh, believing in the own hype, you know, early on. This is now not about hype. This is about, you know, showing his skills, producing a performance on the biggest stage against a very, very good fighter. And if he can do it and shine, then the fights with Conor Ben and, and the big ones for world titles Thank down you. the line are there. Thank you, we'll find out. Live across Matron Boxing social channels, live with Sky Sports as well. Thank you, Adam Smith. Wow, just about catching our breath after an incredible night of boxing last Saturday here at Wembley, live on Sky Sports across the UK the zone platforms all around the world. Last Saturday was special. Last Saturday reminded us why we love the sport of boxing. The pain of defeat, the harrowing silence of Josh Warrington's shock defeat at the hands of Mexico's Mauricio Lara, which has spurred on a nation of fighters, particularly Cesar Suarez and Gabriel Valenzuela as well. But what a thrilling night from top to bottom. And for me, this Saturday, I think we have one of the cards and particularly one of the main events that I haven't looked forward to like this for a long, long time. This is a brilliant night of boxing and we're so pleased to be keeping the sport going, keeping the momentum going. And we can't thank our partners enough, you know, across the board, Betfred, JD, Wow Hydrate, and of course, Sky Sports in the UK, DAZN. This sport is getting bigger and bigger. This is just the start of a huge year for us, of course, this week and next week, live from the home of Miami Dolphins. Who would have thought that? The Hard Rock Stadium will be promoting Canelo Alvarez unified defence against Abney Yildrim and Julio Cesar Martinez and a whole host of fantastic fighters. We live in a dream and we start off this card on Saturday with a very special fight, Jordan Gill against former world title challenger Cesar Suarez. Of course, the narrative this week of Mauricio Lara's victory, the Mexicans coming for victory spurred on for that chance. Jordan, you're up against a very tough one, a fight you're really excited about because you know this fella is a world-class fighter. Yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. Just happy to be out of the house at the moment. So uh, when the call come, I grab the opportunity with both hands to be in the ring with Cesar Suarez. Um, he's an established uh, world-level fighter. He's been in with some massive names, uh, Nonito Donaire, uh, Angel Leo in a world title eliminator, uh, Castro, all these guys, they're, they're top, top fighters. Isaac Dogbo as well. Um, so I'm excited to be back and I'm excited to uh, punish her. I know Dave Caldwell was keen for you to, after that victory against Reese Pelotti, almost bypass that domestic level now. And, you know, we know there's some good fights there for you, but he wants to see you progress up the world rankings. And this is the kind of fight that's going to take you into that top 15. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, especially in a pandemic, 
uh, when you're not fighting as often as you like to, you need to take bigger steps, and this is a big step. Um, I understand that there's a massive threat um, posed to me on Saturday, on Saturday night, and um, you know I expect to, to pass this test with flying colours, um, and I'm expecting a hard fight, but I think it's going to be an entertaining one, and uh, one that I think I'll get a lot of credit for, um, and push on to big, to big things. Same weight class, of course, same country as, as Cesar Juarez. Everyone shocked by the performance of Maurizio Lara last week. You know, was it the, the preparation of, of uh, Josh Warrington? Was it the inactivity? Was it the no crowds? But also, it was a great performance from a Mexican underdog. And, and these guys are going to be really spurred on by that. Your thoughts on last week and that, quite frankly, in this environment, anything can happen. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think I don't think anything was wrong with Josh Monson's preparation. He looked in incredible shape, as he always does. He's very professional. Um, I feel like maybe he went in with the uh, wrong mentality. Maybe the crowd played a part. But, you know, at the end of the day, he stood and traded with a Mexican. And these guys have made a different stuff. Um, and I've got uh, the utmost respect for them as fighters. They fight with fire in their belly. And uh, they're, they're all tough guys and they want to hurt you with every punch. And uh, their shot delivery is different to UK and British and uh, European fighters. And uh, you know, they, they, they look to knock you out and that's what Lara did last week. And um, Josh Warrington played into his hands and I'll not be doing the same thing on Saturday night. Well, Cesar Juarez, uh, Benvenida al Inglaterra, been practicing that one. Thank welcome, so Paco, welcome. Didn't know you were here. Part of the team, of course, of Enrique Tinoco, who defeated Jordan Gill. Uh, last year or, or a few years now ago, before the pandemic. Welcome, a big opportunity. Are you ready for this fight on Saturday night? Sí, bienvenido. Eh, obviamente eres parte del equipo eh, de Tinoco, que, que ganó a, a Jordan hace un par de años. ¿Estás listo para, para esto el sábado por la noche? Sí, estoy listo. I am ready. Me siento muy bien, me siento muy fuerte y no vine de tan lejos para, para perder. Yes, I'm ready. I'm feeling really strong. I didn't come all this way to lose. Obviously, the whole uh, country of, of boxing fans talking about Maurizio Lara's victory last weekend. We know that you know, you're not a young, naive fighter, but you're an experienced fighter. But we have a reputation of, from Mexican fighters coming here to, to war. You're ready for that game plan? Is that what we're going to see from you this weekend? Obviamente sabemos lo que pasó eh, la semana pasada con Mauricio Lara. Eh, tenemos, pero tú no, tú no eres joven, sin experiencia. Eh, vienes aquí muchas veces cuando hablamos de los mexicanos, vienen aquí para la guerra. Es lo que vienes también para que vienes el, el sábado. Eh, es lo que tenemos los mexicanos. Los mexicanos tenemos mucho valor. Tenemos hambre de triunfo. Siempre que vamos a otros países nos morimos en la raya. Lo damos todo. Todos los mexicanos tenemos mucho corazón. Mi apodo, mi sobrenombre lo dice, Corazón Juárez. Y aquí vengo a una guerra, México, Inglaterra. A warrior, here. I am here a wa for one warrior, México, Inglaterra. Yes, I think every time you have Mexican fighters that come here, they uh, have great values, they come with a lot of hunger, they come to win. If you look at my nickname, my nickname is Heart, Corazón. And that says it all, really. Uh, I come for war, yes. Well, thank you very much, Cesar Juarez, Jordan Gill. This is going to be a cracking fight to start off the broadcast on Saturday night. Once again, it's Britain versus Mexico for the WBA International Featherweight title. Gentlemen, if we could come here for a head to head, please. So that will uh, start our televised broadcast off. And Adam, one of the things that is taken us by surprise that late onto the late addition to the card, but what a good fight that uh, Eddie Hans provided there. It's a really good fight. Um, I like Jordan Gill, like his attitude. Um, here. You can come straight in, you can come straight in. 
Uh, that's of course all by a bit, a bit by surprise because that's a late addition to the card, but that's a good match. It is. I just joined you. I, I was didn't want to be off the TV for 15 seconds. So I thought I'd just jump. I really, I really. a slot for you. I really like this fight. Yeah, sorry. I really like this fight. Juarez, part of the Tinoco camp, obviously who had the victory, stoppage victory over Jordan Gill, what is probably 18 months ago now. They fancy it. They think they think he's weak to the body. We know he wasn't 100% against Tinoco, but they probably don't believe that. So this guy. World title challenger, been in with Denaire, been in with Dogbo. He's coming off a couple of defeats to absolute world class fighters in Leo and, and fighters like that. But this is going to tell us a lot about Jordan Gill. They've chose to bypass domestic level to try and get a name and a really big win that could take them on to, to the world stage. Tune in. Just quickly before we go, boxing's a small world and the circles are very close. They will know that Lara came here on the right hand side of the bill with people not giving him much of a chance. He was fired up on stage there. He said, oh, I'm a Mexican warrior and I want another Mexican English, uh, Mexico against English war. That's what Lara's done. He's, he's given all those these guys coming over that extra spring in their step. And now you've got this narrative, Britain against Mexico. The same with Venezuela. Venezuela is a, a liver opponent, in my opinion. Juarez is tough as they come, but he is towards the back end of his career. Valenzuela against Robbie Davis Jr. This is a young fighter, part of Eddie Reynoso's team, part of Canelo Promotions. He wants to go on and fight for a world title, So, but they're all fired up. Fired up. This is the wrong time to fight a Mexican. All right? <laughs> wrong time. Who, who made that match, Eddie? Uh, Adam? COVID yeah. protocols, very good on your social distancing there, telling uh, Eddie Hearn to back off. Um, yeah, very good, very good. Uh, yeah, just to Go back on that. It's caught us by surprise. It's a, it's a good fight. It's a risky fight for Jordan Gill. It is. As I said um, before Eddie came in, it was the attitude of Jordan is great. I mean, I love what he was saying about, you know, looking at what happened with Josh Warrington. And, you know, it's easier said than done, of course. The, the Mexicans are going to, you know, drag you in. He's going to try and, you know, take it to Jordan Gill. But he's got to concentrate on what he does best, Gill, which is he's a nice boxer. He's been in, you know, in the sport since he was a very young boy, four or five. And look, he's, he did have that defeat, but um, there was some illness around there. So look, a peak Jordan Gill against a peak Juarez may be difficult, but I think it's probably the right time to get him. Although if it's the Juarez that was fighting Denaire, it's going to be really tough. OK, well, uh, let's get back over to uh, Eddie Hearn. It's um, exciting times, a professional debut is a nervy time for anyone um, doing it in a bubble environment, live on Sky Sports, that's a pretty big thing. Uh, Johnny Fisher will do that, obviously. We know Johnny Fisher through Sam Jones, who uh, took him out to Vegas to spar Joe Joyce, um, University of Exeter graduate, who decided to try and become a pro boxer. And uh, this is where it's led him so far. So we're very, very excited. Uh, let's get back over to Eddie Hearn, who's on stage with his opponent, Matt Gordon. Thanks, guys. Yes, we go from Britain against Mexico to the heavyweights. And as always, can't wait to witness this one. The professional debut of the Romford Ball, Johnny Fisher against Matt Gordon, two British heavyweights. And of course, we see the start of the journey for the Sam Jones managed. And of course, Matchroom promoted Johnny Fisher. Johnny, we'll start with you. Welcome. Your first time up here. Um, you couldn't have been more highly talked about from your uh, very shy manager. Sam Jones, but finally here, a lot of hard work's gone into this. You're ready for your professional debut on Saturday night. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant to be here. It's a great opportunity for me, and listen, I put a load and load of hard work in, and now I've got to put it all on the line on Saturday night. We know that you are incredibly popular, not just through your roots at Exeter University, but Romford and Essex and everybody around. And if this was your pro debut at the O2 or the Copper Box, it would be absolutely rammed with Johnny Fisher fans. But it's going to be quite a different kind of environment on there on Saturday night. Do you think that will help you stay calm? Because that is the name of the game, right, on Saturday, to stay calm in this pro debut. Yeah, definitely. Listen, I bring, I bring a lot of supporters with me. I've got a great support network around me, which I'm really thankful for. But when it comes to Saturday night and whatever night it is, whoever I'm fighting in front of, it's just me and it's Matt Gordon in that ring. And I've got to show him what I'm about. And I'm going to do that on Saturday. You are coming from uh, a master's degree. It's quite unusual for, for many fighters to come through that route. You are a sensible guy. I've heard you talked in interviews about the need to take it steady. You don't have a massive depth of amateur pedigree, but what you've shown in the gym, sparring Joe Joyce and Dave Allen, and all these top guys, Huey Fury, is you have bundles and bundles of ability and potential. But it's a case of taking your time each fight as it comes and, and learning inside the ring on Saturday. And of course, a great trainer in Mark Tibbs, seeing you through. Definitely, I've, I've got some great experience under my belt with, in terms of sparring. And now I'm with Mark Tibbs and Stephen Andrews. I'm really, really in a good place. But 
I've never made any bones about the fact that I've got to get my experience on the job, and I really mean it. So it all starts on Saturday, and with that, I'm going to have to show what I'm about. And I've shown that potential before, and I've got to show it where it matters now on my debut. Matt, welcome. The, uh, the heavyweights, we know anything can happen. This young man, highly regarded, not huge amounts of amateur experience, but again, in your position, only one punch away, one win away from, from landing a really big fight in the division. That's it, yeah. Um, I know he's come to do the business, like, and, um, you know, I'm here to do the business as well, so, you know, made the best man win on the night. You are in a position where, you know, you travel to take on all these good young heavyweights with loads of pedigree yeah. as well. This young man, you know, like I said, could, could show nerves. Chance to try and exploit that on Saturday night, look for the opening and, and take the chances when they present themselves. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll, Obviously, I'm going to try and take any chance what's there, but um, I've, I've done a few of these lockdown um, shows, as you say, so I feel like, you know, I know what to expect with no crowds there and whatever else. Um, but I, I haven't really heard much about Johnny Fisher, to be honest. Um, I've, I've heard he's quite, like, aggressive and game and that. Um, I've seen on a, a video that he wants to come and he wants to box, like, um, as much as he can. and. If he comes and boxes, that'll be lovely. And like, and uh, if he comes in and he's a bit rough, then we're ready for both, to be honest. And you know, I've got a lot to prove as well myself. Like my um, my record's not been the best in my last few fights against these prospects. So really, I need to try and have a little turn around myself. Like, so you know, obviously, I've not set out to be a journeyman, but my um, Records kind of suggesting otherwise at the minute, but it's not my intention. It all change, all. right? With one win. Hopefully, hopefully. I mean, I, I don't come to lose, though. Mm. Johnny, sounds like the man uh, is not coming to lose on Saturday, of course, been thrown in against a number of top prospects. Excited? A yeah. little bit of nerves as well? Looking forward to getting Saturday out of the way? Yeah, of course there's nerves, but that's where I thrive under that pressure. I've, I've watched Matt's fights, He's, he gives people good fights, and I've seen him, I've got massive respect for him. But he's got to realise that when I come into that on Saturday night, I'm going to be on top of my game. I've trained like a dog since August and I'm ready to go. I live this life and I do it because I want to do it. I could just go to university and I could have got a job up the city. I could have had an easy life. But I chose this because I want to be here. And I'm looking forward to showing it on Saturday against a game opponent who comes to win as well. Well, we can't wait. We always love watching the heavyweights and we're particularly excited about the professional journey of the Rockford Ball. Johnny Fisher starts this Saturday against Matt Gordon. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head up here, please. Johnny, can you just come in quickly? We're live on our Sky Sports uh, social media page. You can take the mask off just for this one there. Um, first box ticked. That's your first yeah. press conference done with your opponent. How do you think it went? Yeah, it went really well. Uh, it's good to be up there with Eddie as well. I'm a big fan of Eddie's from watching him as a, a uni student from before. But it's great to get that, that initial period over now. And now we're ready to fight on Saturday. What did you make of what Matt Gordon had to say? Yeah, it was what I expected. He comes to fight, we know that. He's not really a, a journeyman, he's someone who comes and, to win and he's fought some tough opponents and debutants who've got a lot of experience under their belt as amateurs. So it's going to be a tough night's work and I've got to be on my game. We're across different platforms, so some people don't know your story. You're going to be sick of being asked this question, but people that don't know how you found your way into this position, can you just explain it for us? Yes, yeah, so I was a uni student. I was playing rugby mostly while I was at university, and just out of the blue, I messaged Sam Jones to see if Joe Joyce wanted any sparring when I started boxing again after a couple of years out. And from there, the journey went to Vegas when we were sparring for the Dubois fight. And then after that, in the summer, I got the call to be a professional boxer with Sam Jones and SJM Boxing. So it's, it's been a roller coaster, but I've shown every stage I need to show what I'm about. I've been able to show it. We were allowed to come in and watch you train this morning. Um, just a light pad routine. I say light, my ears are still ringing. Um, what can we expect from you? There's obviously, there is obviously power there. You're a big man, six foot six, 18 stone. But you mentioned up there that you're going to look to box as well. What happens when that red mist, is that red mist going to come down? Are we going to see um, a swing up or do you intend to box? Listen, I know I can have a row and I can have a fight and really give it my best. I've shown that as an amateur. I knocked two people out within 30 seconds, I know that. But 
I've got great skills as well. And if I want to be serious about how far I can go in the professional heavyweight division, I need to show that I've got a great jab. I can move well. I can judge distance well. And I know I can do it all. It's just about executing it on the night. There isn't an abundance of university graduates in professional boxing. I really liked what you said there to Eddie Hearn, which is, I chose this. No one's forced me into this. I could have gone into the city, um, earned a lot of money doing something very easy behind a computer. No disrespect for people to do that job. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's easier than professional boxing, surely. Yeah, listen, I could, I could have done that, but I'm the sort of person I want to excel at whatever I do. Even though I was at school, every, I put myself into every sports club and everything I could do. And there's no better platform or no better challenge in the world than to be a professional heavyweight boxer, especially in the division that we've got now. If I can make my mark on the division in three, four, five years' time and see where I end up, I'll be a very happy man. Brilliant. Spoke really well. Thank you very much for joining us. Good luck on Saturday. Uh, OK, Robbie Davis Jr. is on the stage. Let's get back over to Eddie Hearn. Thanks, guys. Fight three on the card this Saturday night live on Sky Sports in the UK, the zone around the world. This is a fantastic fight. Ten rounds for the IBF International Light Welterweight Championship. Robbie Davis Jr. against Gabriel Valenzuela. Of course, another British against Mexico matchup. Robbie, probably not the best time to fight a Mexican over here in the UK at the moment. One thing we know is they come to fight. One thing we know, you're in for a real challenge on Saturday night. Yeah, I'm looking forward to being back here. Um... But make no mistake, um, what happened last week is not going to be happening this week. I've been preparing for a long time, even with the pandemic. I've stayed in the gym, kept ticking over, but I haven't been training. Just ticking over, I've been training like I had a fight. And um, it just came round at the right time. And come Saturday night, I'm, I'm going to do a job. You have been incredibly disciplined, always stayed in shape, always stayed ready. You were one lucky enough to box in 2020, but it was at the start of the year. You'll be around a year out, time you get back in the ring. The right time, you feel still sharp, ready for this challenge. Obviously, you've had more time to work with Dominic Ingle in the gym preparing for this yeah, fight. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, a lot of people would have thought, oh, pandemic, no one's boxing. Go home and just stay at home until you have a fight. With me joining the new gym, I thought I'll use this time to learn more on my craft work and the Ingle way with Dom and the rest of the team. And, I think being in the gym all this time is probably going to benefit me more than it would have done if I just jumped back in the gym eight weeks before a fight. Like It's definitely going to benefit me in the long run. I know Dominic will be watching your opponent as well. If you watch Valenzuela, well-schooled Mexican fighter, part of Eddie Reynoso's stable of fighters in Mexico as well. This is a, a real challenge for you, and that's what you want now as you try to climb up those world rankings. Yeah, definitely. I've um, seen glimpses of him. Seems like a good fighter, very capable. Um, like I always say with all my opponents, I don't watch too much of them, I don't analyse too much, I leave that to my team, but even just the sparring what I have in my own gym, Kate Gallard, Liam Williams, um, all world level fighters, um, whatever he brings to the table, I'm going to be ready for it. Gabriel, welcome, welcome. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about this a lot, but a massive win for Mexico last Saturday, Maurizio Lara, yourself and Cesar Juarez come with a spring in your step, ready for the challenge on Saturday night. Sí, obviamente se va a hablar mucho de esto, de lo que pasó la semana pasada con Mauricio Lara, pero César Juárez, si tú vienes con mucha ilusión, ¿no?, después de haber eh, enterado de lo que pasó. No, claro que sí, este, es una motivación muy grande para nosotros que, que México esté dejando marca en otros países y venimos listos para, para repetir la misma historia esta semana. Yes, obviously it's a, it's a huge motivating factor that Mexico have come over here and caused an upset in another country and we're going to repeat that on Saturday. You've talked a lot in your interviews, you believe you'll win this fight by knockout. Is that, that the aim for you on Saturday, to be aggressive and try and knock Robbie Davis out? Has hablado mucho de que quieres noquear a, a Robbie Davis. Es, ¿Eso sería el plan de la pelea, que vienes con una mucha agresión para la pelea? Eh, venimos más que nada queriendo terminar la pelea por knockout debido a que no queremos dejarle las, la decisión a los jueces por, por varias situaciones que han sucedido respecto a peleadores que han venido y se han llevado las peleas completamente bien y, y en las tarjetas eh, salen perdiendo. We want to make sure we finish this with a, with a KO uh, because we don't want to leave anything to the judges because we know there have been some cards that have been, let's say, not favorable to, to the away fighters. So we don't want to leave to the judges on this occasion. We want to go for the knockout. This is a big moment for you, part of the uh, Eddie Reynoso team. Um, this win on Saturday night will put you in a great position in the world rankings of the 140 pound division. You, you're ready to take this opportunity on Saturday. 
Si estás listo para esta oportunidad, porque está ganando esto, siendo parte del equipo de Eddie Reynoso, te da uh, un salto muy grande en el ranking de 140. No, claro que sí, venimos muy motivados, estamos listos. Eh, agradezco a mi, a mi promotor, el señor Eddie Reynoso, por esta gran oportunidad que nos está brindando al venir aquí a, un, a otro país a, a representar México. Y, y claro que sí, por, por, vamos por un lugar más en el ranking y, y a posicionarnos en el mapa. Yeah, so we want to put ourselves on the map and climb up the rankings. Um, so we're really motivated, thanks to Eddie Reynoso, for this opportunity to come and represent Mexico in this country. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Robbie. Cracking fight this one. Ten rounds for the IBF international title. Fight three on a tremendous card this Saturday. Gentlemen, if we could have a face-to-face -face here, please. Robert, you can take your mask off just for this uh, brief interview if you put it back on. Um, what do you make of uh, what Gabriel Valenzuela had to say there? He hasn't lost in four years. He's part of Eddie Ronoso's stable. He's spurred on by Maurizio Lara's win here at the weekend. Uh, he's saying all the right things. Yeah, he's saying all the right things. Um, but it's just like the fighters in my gym, just because they're doing well doesn't mean I'm doing well. You've got to do it yourself just because the people around you uh, flying you've got to do it yourself and um, come Saturday night I'm here to do a job on him um, I don't care what a game he brings I'm going to be ready for him it's in all walks of life it's how we've used this pandemic to to further ourselves you have used it to spend time alongside Dominic Ingle who you've only had the one fight with previous to this um, behind closed doors what have you been working on that we we might see in action on Saturday basically just over the years if you Everyone that's followed me um, through my career, every time I fight, my style's different. I'm doing this or I'm doing that, and I think this is best for me. Working with Dommy's found like what's best for me moving forward and what works for me and what doesn't, and I think it's going to pay off. We've had time to work on it and drill and drill and drill, and now coming Saturday night, I'll be able to showcase everyone what, um, what I've been learning. That's part of the professional journey, isn't it? Finding the style by going around different places that actually suits you, and you're 31 now. You feel that you found that? Yeah, that's what I was going to say, that better late than never, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're only 31, come on. I know, but some, like sometimes people look at you at 31 and think you're an old, but I am a young 31, and I haven't got many miles on the clock and I can, I can match any young 20-year-old for fitness and preparation in any way. Um, this is just going to be a step for me for a big year, hopefully. Is the, is the carrot that's being dangled in front of you there, this is obviously for the IBF Intercontinental title, do you anticipate that if uh, Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez meet, that the winner goes up in weight, those titles could become free, and it's it's imperative that you keep your name in that mix? Yeah, definitely. Like um, I've had my name in the um, the governing body rankings before. Obviously, with the defeat, I've dropped out of them. So this is my opportunity to get back into them. Then and then Jordan Summer towards the end of the year, hopefully get another two big fights in as well, and really push forward. Go well, Robbie. Thanks for joining us. Sorry, I ushered you away there, Rob, because I thought we were going to go straight to uh, Ryland Charlton and Florian Marco on stage with Eddie Hearn. Not quite there yet, but we are now. Thank you, guys. Well, as excited as I am for the main event, this one is one that everybody is talking about. What a fight between Florian Marco and Ryland Charlton this Saturday night. It's a complete pick and fight. Probably Florian the favourite going into his previous performance where I can't quite believe he still didn't get the decision in his last fight that resulted in a draw, but that's old news, that's history now. This fight is going to be an absolute barn burner. Firstly, Florian, you look in tremendous shape. This is the first real challenge of your career. People talking about 50-50 fights. I put a poll out on social media. A lot of people believe this man will win by knockout on Saturday night. Of course, your fans believe you will do the business. Are you ready? You're ready for the challenge of Ryland Charlton? I am more ready than ever before. I, I couldn't wait for this day. After my, my injustice that they did to me to my last fight, I couldn't wait for 
again to step in the ring and to show what I'm about. You know, I'm really happy that uh, uh, Rylan is uh, he have his record and uh, is undefeated. The people think that he will cause me really problems because this is the fight that I want. You know, I don't want fights that people expect me to knock them out fast. I'm gonna do this, but the people expect me to not gonna do it. And this is, I feel very good, you know, the people can think what they want. Saturday, I'm in my best shape ever, and you will see what I'm gonna do. We know Ryland Charlton will, will come and be very aggressive in this fight. I believe he will, and, and we've seen that in the past. Are you expecting to meet fire with fire? Are you ready to do that, or do you think you have to be sensible in there as well? I mean, do you feel that we're gonna see a more disciplined performance from Florian Marco, or are you ready to go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? and go to war with Charlton as well? I, I have changed many things in my game plan, but for sure this is what makes me excited, that the, the, the crowd want to see the knockouts and the aggressiveness. I don't think Ryland will stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with me to fight in there. Maybe he can say that now, but in there he will change his, he, his mind, you know, and we're going to see it Saturday. Do you believe Florian Marku wins this fight inside the distance? 100%. Ryland, I think, I believe you are going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on Saturday. I know that some trainers and other people might not always recommend that, but is that what we're going to see from you? You're coming for an all-out war this Saturday night against Florian Marku. I'm just going to get in there, do what I do best, and if Florian wants to come and meet me in the middle, he'll be thinking otherwise when I land a shot. He'll be on the back foot, 100%. Obviously, it was a big win for you against Joseph Laws, your training team and management team. You weren't overly surprised by that victory. You didn't even really celebrate that much. But this is a bigger step up now. This is a bigger platform, massive opportunity to put your name in there with all the big domestic welterweights and beyond. Yeah, yeah, it's a massive opportunity. And the Laws fight, people still don't know enough about me. It's only got in there and done the three rounds. Um, so, yeah, this is going to really get my name out there once I beat Marku. And, again, it's... Similar to the Laws fight, um, it's just another big, I've already done one big ticket seller, I'm going to do another big ticket seller, and then, then I will be the big ticket seller. Yeah, can you not get rid of all the ticket sellers? That will, you know, I'm not going to be too over the moon with that, but what do you expect from Florian Marku? We know that you know, he's a proud man, he's a fighting man, he's very aggressive as well, he likes to punch as well, but do you expect him to, to be a little bit more cautious in this fight? Do you expect him to perhaps box off the back foot against you? Yeah, I think he's going to be more cautious, just because... It's over 10 rounds, so he can't afford to come, come running at me. And I mean, if he does come running at me, then he's going to walk up to the pint size power. Similar as that. Do you believe you win this fight by stoppage? I know that the old adage, by any means necessary, but in your heart of hearts, do you believe you knock Florian Marku out on Saturday night? Yeah, I could knock him out, yeah, easily. But we'll wait and see. Could be points, could be knockout. I never know. Just, just the win is all I focus on. Florian, finally from you as well. You're ready, ready for Albania. Massive support, everybody tuning in from around the world. I, I am more ready than, than ever. I can't wait for Saturday. I love that the, the UK crowd are waiting uh, the coming event, us, the, the, the main event. And I'm gonna show to, Rylan is too slow for me. I'm gonna show that he is strong, but he is too slow for me. And you will see it Saturday night. Well, we will see. Both men predicting the knockout. This is a fantastic co-main event. Do not blink in this one. Florian Marku against Ryland Charlton. Gentlemen, head head up here, please. Florian's going to join us live on the stream. Florian, what can you tell us about what you just said at the head-to-head -head there? Also, we can't pick that up. I say you're too slow for me. You're going to see this. And he will see it, you know. He think that he is, uh, he's a, like a bodybuilder, but he, we are not here to, to take weights. We are not making weights. We throw punches. He is a strong fighter, but he's not on my level. And let's see if he back up everything he said about me. 
Clifton Mitchell said that uh, in terms of people that he's taken on the pads, you hit as hard as anyone. I mean, that is a pretty big endorsement considering the people that he's had on the, uh, the pads, in, including Tyson Fury. Um, but it's about using that power correctly. Do you believe that you can use your feet, use your skills to land that punch on Ryan and Charlton? If he stays, I will land one. And this will be the last one that he will see. I am, the last performance was my worst, but I, will, I, I win clearly. Now it's time to show what I'm about, you know, and I can't wait for Saturday. What do you think that he's thinking at the moment? Do you think he's nervous? I mean, he's always smiling, doesn't seem to be too bothered about anything that you've said. But do you think deep down inside he is nervous? Of course, uh, he is nervous, but I think he also he have his chance to prove. Of course, he will be, he will go there in the first round to show something. But after his first, the first round, he will change his mind because he will see what he have in front of him. And me. I can lose the fight of only if I'm unconscious. I don't lose fight, I don't let any more the fights go to the points if I see and I hear. That's a, that's a fact. After the last injustice that they did to me, I don't let any more fights go to the points. Last time you did eight rounds for the first time, if you have to go ten this time, it's all well and good saying, look, I'm not going to let it go to the judges. But if you have to, are you able to do ten rounds at a pace that you feel that you can set? I am in the best shape that I have ever been. I have worked really hard. The last fight that I had, it was the first eighth rounder, but I was, I thought that I am in, in a good shape because I haven't really trained for eight rounds, but now I'm more than 10 ready. Brilliant. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Bring in uh, Adam Smith. Adam, that's bubbling along nicely, isn't it, that fight? Uh, there was a lot of respect there, though. Yeah, well, was there? What am I saying? Was there a lot of respect? I think there was enough. Yeah, I think look, they they both respect the fact that this is a very hard fight for the pair of them, and it's a very important fight in both careers. You know, Ryland Charlton, he's just burst onto the scene, didn't he, with that win over Joe Laws, and uh, as he said, it didn't come as a surprise to him. Um, he's aggressive. I thought, I thought you were going to say there, nothing bothers him. He just keeps smiling. We haven't seen. I mean, haven't seen any sign at all that he's suffering with nerves or he's very calm but i think florian seems really calm as well um i remember him in the last bubble he was more sort of pent up and i think you know they've they both obviously prepared extremely hard uh, for this fight it's uh, it's it's a fantastic clash isn't it at uh, at this stage and uh, this this is this is, un well. this, this is un this is unexpected i think we we just thought we wouldn't get the fighters but we have got neil marsh and adam booth with eddie hearn Thanks, guys. I think uh, before the big build-up to Kelly Avenisi, we want to talk to the teams. Of course, two guys that we've seen on all the promos, Neil Marsh and Adam Booth. I'm not going to talk too much about the past. I want to talk about the fight on Saturday because I don't think I've ever seen two teams quite as confident about their man's victory going into a fight. Neil, we'll start with you. Welcome. Um, it's here. I think you and Frank Smith and me, we've had, you know, is this going to happen? We don't believe he's going to take the fight. Do you believe now that this fight is happening? I know we've still got a couple of days to go, but any doubts now, this Saturday, we're going to get a fantastic fight. Yeah, I'm as confident as I've ever been um, that we get the fight on finally. You know, there's no doubt that Adam and Josh have done an hell of a lot of work. You can see with the pictures what they're, what they're releasing. They, they, they come and they want business now, so we're ready. We're 100% confident, so yeah, I'm confident that Saturday night's our night and it's going to happen. I know you and Carl Greaves done a great job, David Avenisi and always in great shape. What's the keys to victory in this fight? We know you're not part of the training team from the corner, but you just believe so much in your man. You just believe he's too strong, too game, too tough, and he just wants this too much. Yeah, I think um, fighters uh, recover from losses in different ways. And I think David's improved as a fighter. He's got better and better as per his form. Um, people talk about that there's a year of acti uh, inactivity. The delays, normally, you don't prepare for moving fighters who's got speed. Uh, we've had three camps solely on Josh Keller. Um, a few years ago, we, we considered moving David down to 140. We believe with all the strength training and that over the last two years, he's, he's a fully pledged well away. We think Josh struggled with the weight in 2018. We believe his bone density has gone a little bit thicker, his muscle mass 
You can see with the pictures he's been doing a lot of muscular um, strength and conditioning. Um, I think the weight's going to be a little bit harder. And I think boxing's about levels. And I just think David Avenisian's just a little bit too soon for him. Adam, I know that uh, this fight's been bubbling for a long time. I know you've been excited with what you've seen. You've always been excited with the ability of Josh Kelly from the moment he turned professional. But this is it. This is the moment we get to find out. Find out. Incredibly exciting for us, for the broadcasters, for the fans. You get to see how good Josh Kelly is. And you think this is the perfect timing? Well, I thought it was the perfect timing two years ago as well. I think, uh, for me, the difference is the way that Josh will go about the fight this time because he is two years older and much closer now to his physical and mental prime than he was two years ago. The fight is a better fight than it was two years ago because I believe that David has also improved. You know, since, since we missed the first fight, he's gone on and won the European title and defended it again in Spain and then had a first round knockout win. So when you look at his momentum of his career, and how his confidence and his standing has evolved, it's that much of a bigger fight. And what you and the fans have on, on Saturday night are two genuine top 10 guys who are both in fantastic condition. You can see it, it's oozing off them. As coaches, we always use our perceptions and we look at how they're walking. I played some table tennis with David last night. Got a really good energy from him. And I can just see. You win? 2-0. Two, two okay. um, but he had, he had a, he had, he's got a fantastic energy about him. And as a coach, and I've long said this, that I, I love this sport because I love the fights where people think you can't win. And, and you know that they're 50-50 fights. I've been invited, involved in title fights where you know your man's going to win. And the celebration feels hollow. It always makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But this is the type of fight where you know that it's real and you know that the rewards will, will be real. And I've said for a while that I believe that this is the fight that everybody gets to see what we already know about Josh, but nobody's seen yet. We've seen the shape, and I, I get the feeling in this fight that Josh Kelly, he's prepared to stand and fight, and, and fight fire with fire in this fight. A lot of people who are breaking the fight down talk about, you know, Kelly needs to move and box off the back foot, and Avenisi is gonna walk him down. I know you're not gonna give too much away, but you believe in the power of Josh Kelly and the strength of Josh Kelly to stand there with David Avenisi. Yeah, but but when I visualise David, when we're doing drills or I'm, we're doing pads or technique or talking everything, I visualise David bigger than he is, faster than he is, stronger than he is. I, I visualise him as good as he can be. Um, I think that both of them are going to go forward. I think both of them are going to go back. I think both of them are going to have questions asked of them. And, and I truly believe that Josh is ready to answer those questions not just in a physical sense, because they're both going to have to do that, but I think in, in the sense that he's just a little bit special. And finally, a lot's being made about boxing behind closed doors. Do you think this fight just has too much bite and spite to it for that to be effective? We know Josh is a showman. Everybody uh, gets up for it when the crowd's there. You were a part of the broadcasting team last week, and it was just a harrowing night, wasn't it? A, a shocking night that we saw around particularly with Josh Warrington. You don't believe that'll play a factor in this fight. There's just too much at stake, too much on the line. No, I don't. Like, sometimes sometimes uh, when Josh is electric in the gym, it's when there's no music and he creates his own conversation. It's almost like he becomes, it's, it's almost, in, almost impossible to coach in those moments in time because he goes so deep into his subconscious that he just flows and he sees things that as a coach, sometimes you just can't see because of, his, because of his perceptions. So we've had him sparring with no music where you can hear the breathing, the impact and stuff like that, and, and he's prepared for it. And at the end of the day, you know, it's gonna be so intense that whether there was 20,000 people there or none, they're not gonna hear it anyway. Finally, I guess you won't make a prediction, but in your heart of hearts, do you believe Josh Kelly wins this inside the distance? I wouldn't be sitting here feeling like this with all my years as a coach and my experience, with the belief and confidence I have, if that wasn't the case. Um, what I'm excited about is for people to realize what has been flirted with Josh in some of his fights, but without any real questions being asked of him. And I think like all true champions, when they get tested and their backs against the wall, 
they show themselves. Now, when Josh fights fellas that don't go at him, sometimes he doesn't look so good. He is made for pressure fighters, and that's what I'm excited about. And Neil, as well, fine. I know you've got a few bets out on this one, one with Mick Conlon as well. If you have to choose a method of victory, you believe it's inside the distance as well? Absolutely, no doubt. You know, you, you know we respect Josh. He could make the fight very difficult for six, seven rounds. Um, but, but David will get to him. You know, we've got plan A, B and C. If he wants to fight, we're ready. All our sparring's been different variations. We, we concentrate on what we truly believe, but we've not neglected the other part. And whatever Josh Kelly does, we're ready for. And, you know, if he wants to trade at the beginning, it'll end early. If, if he wants to run and try and control the pace and break us up and try to take it on late, we'll take him out late. Um, I've got absolutely no doubt. And for the, you know, for, for the public and the people watching, and I, and I know many people say this, but this has been the best camp in the five, six years of being with Avenicia. He's got better, he's got better. The sparring, you know, you may have heard reports of how it's been going. Some of the kids just haven't been able to keep, keep up with him. And, uh, you know, all respect to all of the partners, I just don't think Josh is ready for that 12 round war. And, you know, if he had to put a prediction, we'll take him out late. But we are prepared for all, all other events. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Adam. Genuinely not seen two teams who believe more that victory is upon them on Saturday night. We won't have a head-to-head, -head, gentlemen, but we look forward to an incredible fight on Saturday. Thank you very much. Over to you guys. Adam Smith. Uh, I wrote a couple of things down there because there was a lot in there, wasn't there? Good to see a uh, handshake between the two. Um, yeah, I wrote down a couple of things there. Um, Neil Marsh saying that one of the keys is that Avanesian has had three back-to-back -back camps to prepare for a mover in Josh Kelly. How key could that be? It could be very key. Um, I think that, look, they were always destined to meet, even when it didn't happen in Sheffield. You've got that feeling that one day this, this, this time would come. And it's come at the right time for a European title when Avanesian's had a, a really good spell. Uh, Josh Kelly's had time, I think, under Adam Booth, more time to mature, um, to get used to each other. And look, we've known Adam for many, many years for the, for the time with David Hay, obviously, and George Groves and Andy Lee and so many others. Um, you know, he's a very, very experienced uh, and excellent coach. Um, and I don't think that he would be, you know, as confident if, if he wasn't absolutely sure in what he sees could be transferred to the ring. That's the big but question, isn't that's it? That's the big question that we don't know. You know, it's um, he was a great amateur, Josh Kelly, but he wasn't quite an elite amateur. He didn't quite, you know, he didn't quite shine when the spotlight was on him. And this is the chance now for him to do it in the professional ring. It's a hugely competitive division, uh, the welterweights, obviously worldwide. But this is a, a, a major, major fight. And I think that, you know, if Kelly wins this in style, you know, he will go on to, to become a great fighter for us, I think. But if he doesn't, I think they'll have to go back to the drawing board and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have to work on, you know, on little things. Talent sometimes is not enough. But have they had time? Are we going to see the, the full package with Josh Kelly? Or is this guy, David Avanesian, who we've seen before and is proven going to be just too much for him? OK, this is the one we've all been waiting for. Let's go over to Promoter Eddie Hearn. Well, here we go. Finally, almost the wait is over, just a couple of days away. Both men here, fit, COVID-free, ready to fight in an absolute fight of the year contender for me on Saturday night. This one for the European Welterweight Championship, but quite frankly, all due respect to our friends in the, the EBU, much, much, much bigger than that. The rivalry, the history, the narrative, and also the position in the world rankings of the welterweight division for the winner of Avanesian against Kelly. Firstly, David, the champion, welcome. You look in great shape. A um, little bit of fun and games last night between the teams, but you're ready. You're ready for this moment. It's been a long time coming. You look in tremendous shape. Yeah, hello everybody, thank you. Yeah, well, too long time, eh? is this fight change, change your time and I have many campus, many trainings, and my range 100%, and I hope everything good. Tomorrow wait, everything good, and after tomorrow go fight. 
both teams predict a knockout victory. Uh, I saw one of your interviews where you said, well, any means necessary, but you believe this is going to be a great fight. This fight is one that everybody is looking forward to. Yeah, I never think many people say you need big go, or maybe, I don't know, it's Georgia, no. I never think for need go, understand? I need win fight. It's, this is my work. It's, I give everything I win fight. It's, 100% need you, give you 100% for fight, understand? And check your fight, check your win, and after I go home to see my children and family. Good time. Josh, um, interestingly, I expected you to sit on that side. I forgot you are the challenger going into this fight. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen you so focused. Mm. Is that because you know the importance of this fight or, or because you know how tough Saturday night will be? This is a massive moment for your career. Yeah, I've got great respect for David, and I just echo what he said. Family, health, it's the most important. Get my own to them, but we've got to get a job done on Saturday. And that's my, it's my, it's my main aim in 2021 to start off with this European title. I truly believe it. You look in tremendous shape. Um, mm. Again, you know, I know little bits and pieces posted from Adam Booth. He sent me a couple of pictures, and I've asked if I could post them, and he said no, because, you know, he loves to keep things under wraps. But it's no secret, this is the absolute shape of your career so far, the best you've ever done the weight, the best preparation you've ever had? 100%. I believe that I've stepped up levels where I couldn't even imagine I, went, I, I, I could do in the gym. I thought last time I was ready before COVID and it could cancel, but um, I'm nowhere, I was nowhere near ready compared to where I am now. All I need to do is go and put a show on on um, Saturday. I've done a lot of talking this week. I feel like I've expressed myself fully in what I want to do and what, what I believe will happen. So we've just got to do the dance on Saturday. As always in big fights, people analyse the fight, which way it's going to go. And a lot of people talking about David will apply the pressure and you'll be moving a lot in this fight. But something tells me from your quotes and also from what I've seen in the gym, you're ready to fight fire with fire on Saturday night. You believe you have the strength, the size and the power to stand with Avanissian if need be. Listen, I think David is a strong, capable fighter. And, um, but I believe I'm a big welterweight and I'm strong. I'm, I'm, I'm a very strong welterweight. So. Saturday night's gonna, um, it's gonna be a night of enjoy for everybody, I think. So, I think get in there, perform, do what I do, like I said. I did a lot of talking this week and I've expressed myself massively. So now it's time to quiet down, focus in, get the job done. David, we know how passionate you are about your family and your career. This is must win on Saturday night for the career of David Avanissi. You must win this fight. Yes, yeah, must win, it's neat. It's big fight, good fight, and I'll be uh, training many England's fan, understand the Spanish fan, is Russian message me, is, I think the uh, English fan number one is boxing and good, understand it, work, everything's good. Good, is Saturday night, show people this fight, is everything good, is good, good fight, have good fight. Give everything for win these fighters. Thank you, David. And finally, Josh, so exciting. Young fighters come out of the Olympics. You know, you get that benefit of learning your trade, fighting all over the world. But on Saturday night, the crunch time comes. You're ready to step up and put yourself on the map as one of the best welterweights in the world. I'm ready to enjoy this. I'm ready to enjoy it. Um, when I'm in the ring, I'm at home. So just get me in that ring. That's all I want to say. Just get me in that ring. I can't wait. Well, both of you, stay calm, stay locked up in your room, two days to go before it's finally here. For me, not look forward to a fight as much as this for a long, long time. Do not miss this Saturday. Tremendous card live on Sky Sports in the UK, DAZN all over the world, headed by this tremendous fight for the European Welterweight Championship. David Avanesian against Josh Kelly. Gentlemen, if we could have a head to head here, please.
Kelly first. Yeah, I think we're going to try and grab Josh Kelly first and then David, if that's okay. Josh, you can take your mask off for this. Just ask you to join us down here. We are live. Um, don't want to keep you too long because you've made it very clear that you've done a lot of talking this week and you want to focus now. One of the things Adam Booth said in the press conference before you came out there was, we know how good Josh Kelly is behind closed doors. The key is to show everybody on fight night what we already know. Is that how you see it? That we haven't seen the best of you yet? Not yet, not by a mile, but Saturday. Saturday, she'll bring the best out of us, so probably when it does. You've done enough of these fight camps, but um, the bubble is slightly different. It's all about peaking at the right time. How do you feel now, two days out? I feel good, I feel ready, I feel calm. I've never felt this, this sort of um, calm slash ready slash everything. Um, listen, let's get it on Saturday. How do you see this fight going? Look, you've stood face to face with him num num numerous times, but you just come face to face there. There's only one more to go tomorrow. Yeah. When you leave here, you'll go and back to your room and you'll imagine how the fight goes. Do you think he's going to change what he does? Is he going to come out, pressure, aggression? Yeah. You think that that's what he's going to do? He's not going to try and box? No, I think it's pressure. I think pressure, pressure, pressure. It's all three and four. I'd be disappointed if he doesn't bring the pressure. I'm, I, I, I know I'm in for a hard fight, but I know I won. I'm capable of winning more than 100%. And it's pressure, so come on, let's bring it. Do you see that this is the platform and the stage for you to announce yourself as a world, world weight contender? Yes, the European title's on the line. Eddie Hearn made it very clear that nobody's disrespect, disrespecting the European title, but for you, you want to prove that you're a world-level fighter. Yeah, one fight at a time. This fight's a step away from big fights, so this fight's a key. So, go well and see if and can get, uh, get the fight done and get the win. When will that mindset change? When do you think the um, hit, hit fights talk about sort of a, a switch that is flicked on to off in terms of when your fight face comes on? Will that be when you go over to the arena? Will that be when you're having your hands wrapped? Will it be after you've weighed in, you've had some dinner and refueled? When will that be? Just as before I step in the ring. As I'm doing my ring walk before I step in the ring. Um, switch on, I'm bouncing on the other side of the ring, I see him and everything will just switch on, just laser. We're going to leave you to your own devices tomorrow, so this will be the last time we speak to you, just your final prediction. Kelly win, big win. Brilliant. Thank you for joining us, wish you all the best of luck. I'll just ask you to step out and, and David Avanesian to step in. David, I'll try and keep the questions very simple because I know your, your English is improving all the time. What did you make of uh, the press conference and what you saw from Josh Kelly there when you looked into his eyes? What did you think? I think it's, he said he's ready. I need him. I want him ready it's to go for fight. I need. I know. I know. I know. You say this is just a job to you, but I look at that poster behind you that says December 2018, March 2020, January 2021. It's your life as well. You've had to put your life on hold. Just how excited are you to get started on Saturday night that finally you get the chance to fight Josh Kelly? Yes, you know many time changes fight is I have many time trainings, anything is lose time understand is time number one for, for life. Is now finally is check everything, give everything. And need to win this fight, man. After see next, the next fight is. Neil Marsh came out and said one of the big things that has helped you is the fact you've had three camps, three training cramp camps to prepare for Josh Kelly's style, which is someone that's very quick and moves about a lot. Just how much of a benefit has that been that you've had these three back-to-back -back camps to prepare solely for Josh Kelly's style? Sorry. That was a complex question, wasn't it? I knew I was going down a rabbit hole there. To, tell us a, camp, yeah, camp. your camp, the three training camps three that you've training, had. Yeah, four, yeah. four, yeah. For Josh Kelly's style. style. Yeah, his style in terms of being a mover. What yeah. will, what can we expect from you? What have you worked on? What have you prepared oh, for? Fight. Yeah. Yes, many people say you need to be pressure, Josh uh, running. Yeah, his style, understand? He style this fight. My style is uh, pressure, need be change, understand? I see it's fight day, it's ring. If you go ring, it's change anything. You see what work you give your opponent. Is I see what work and start start my style and stand. At the media workouts last night that you did with Carl Greaves, Carl said David's hands are very very fast. Josh Kelly just said we think it's going to be pressure and aggression, and you only know one way, which is forward. 
but do you think that you can match him in a boxing match as well? If you have to use your boxing skills, do you think you can beat him in a boxing match? Okay, yeah. <laughs> you, and listen, so I use you tell is uh, yeah. You're renowned for your aggression, I mean, but can yeah, but can you box if you have to box? Ah, uh, he. Yeah. I, I check my work. I give my work. Understand? Is I know wait he what work give me. I need I give my work. Is I need for I check ring. I'm champion. I give my work. Is he what boxing move? I I don't know. It's, I think it's not need me. Same boxing move, play. Understand? This is big fight. This is man sport. Understand? You need the big heart. Everything good and keep your title and take your win. Thank you so much for doing that in English. Look, it's only fair. We've asked you to do everything in English. If your fans will be watching this around the world, if you want to say something in Russian yeah, to your fans, you can. Yeah, yeah, of course. My family is my friends. I speak Russian. Всем привет, кто смотрит, ребят. Дева, Люлю, папа Люлю, привет. And uh, всем спасибо, кто болеет. Many people is message me, English people, is Spanish people, Russian, Armenian, is, is support me. Thank you. Спасибо. See you Saturday. В субботу увидимся, не пропустите. Brilliant. Thank you very much for doing that. I'll let you go. And I'll bring in just Adam Smith to finish there. Adam, just translate uh, what David just said there. <laughs> I thought you would. I thought you would. What a likeable guy, isn't he? And what a hard man in the ring and a tough, tough guy to beat. Uh, Josh Kelly's going to have his work cut out on uh, on Saturday night, no doubt about that. It's it's not going to be easy from start to finish. Um, you know, David Avanesian is uh, is a bit of a throwback, isn't he? You know, he's uh, he's travelled around, he's taken fights he he shouldn't have won, but he did. He's uh, he's upset the apple cart on uh, on more than one occasion. So um, you've got to give him huge respect. And there's a real mature feel about him, isn't he? He talks about this is his work. You know, he. This is a win on Saturday, then he moves to the next one. It's a, it's a mission. It's, it's old-fashioned thinking as well as the style he's got too. Um, he's an intelligent man, and I think he's going to be uh, he's going to be looking to put on one of his great performances on on Saturday. You know, we're all looking at, at Josh Kelly and what happened to Josh Warrington last week. You know, we're, we're around the British fight scene, but this is a guy, David Avanesian, who has come over here. You know, he's 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 moved away from his family. You know, he's got dreams of his own. And um, even though he's in his early 30s, I think he still relishes, you know, getting on top of the world again and, and, and proving that he is, you know, as good as we've seen him at times. The, the big question here is how good is Josh Kelly? Mm. You know, we, we don't know. We think he's very, very good. We certainly know how talented he is and, and, and how he's a, he's a brilliant gym fighter. And he, we've seen flashes throughout the pro career of that. You know, remember the next gen that he headlined in Newcastle mm. and he was, he was winning everything with that left hand? He's brilliant at times, but can he sustain it in 12 hard rounds against a warrior like Avanesian? 12 rounds, European title. It's a fantastic fight. And both of them are so confident, the teams and the fighters, and they both, Andy, look in tremendous shape. They've had so much time to prepare for this that they want to be at absolutely their best on Saturday night, and I really think there will be. I think we'll get one of the fights, not just the matches of recent times, I think we'll get one of the actual fights of recent times. I think it will be that good. Come on, Adam, set it up perfectly there. You've got us all bubbling away. Um, that was good, we enjoyed that. Uh, thanks to all the fighters that came on and spoke, particularly David Avanesian, who, who does these interviews in English where, um, you know, the, perhaps my questions weren't the best, but uh, you know, all the respect to him for coming on and doing that, and Josh Kelly as well. Join us tomorrow, 1 o'clock, same platform that you're watching on today, you can watch on tomorrow. Keep your questions coming in, we like to answer them where we can, and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon.